Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. My guest today is Nancy Perraud. Nancy is a very good friend of 60 and Me. She writes travel articles for our website and she also works uh, for About.com as an expert uh, writer for specializing in the senior traveler. So, um, Nancy, welcome again to the show. Thanks for having me. Nancy, um, you know, we've talked about all kinds of uh, topics, uh, uh, but one that comes up most frequently is cruising. Women over over 60 seem to love cruising. It's like the ultimate form of, uh, of travel. You know, you get on with your suitcase, you don't unpack more than once, and you just, you just wait it on. They're just such beautiful uh, opportunities to have fun on these cruise ships. But um, I think that there's also a budget side to it. And uh, a lot of people, for example, have to pay a little extra if they're traveling solo because of a single supplement, right. or they've just generally, generally had to save for this time on the cruise. Right. So mm-hmm. um, I'd love you to give me some thoughts, um, you know, tips about the industry that maybe can help us save money that maybe the cruise lines don't really want you to know too much about. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first tip I would give anyone considering a cruise is to read the contract. Usually you can read the cruise line's basic contract on their website. And then, you, you know, of course, once you book the cruise, they start sending you all of these documents. You must read read it because you that will tell you what you're paying for, yes. what will cost extra, what they don't provide. And especially if you are going on a cruise that involves um, tendering, you know, using the small boats to right. get from the cruise ship to sure. the, your port of call, there are some restrictions on who can be tendered. Um, if you use a wheelchair, uh, tendering can be a difficult issue might not be a ramp to get you onto the, the yeah. tender. Yeah. And they might say, well, we'll just carry you, you know, like a sack of groceries or something like that. Maybe that's not something you would want to experience. So those kinds of things are in your cruise contract. Also, they will tell you that they can change the itinerary at any time. Of course, if there's weather or something has gone wrong, you know, and so when you read the contract, you know, all of those things, you know what to expect, you know, if how to, you know, file a grievance if you have one. And those things are things you need to know before the cruise begins, not at the end when something has gone wrong. Yeah, and we've actually talked about this other another aspect in in different interviews, but um, things about be careful that the shore excursions are either included or that you know that know the cost, cost is going to be mm-hmm. that the um, the food you're you're fed you're three meals a day, but that's in the general restaurant usually and not in the specialty uh, mm-hmm. di- r- r- Italian food or the Japanese uh, restaurant. Those are extra. So basically, right. yeah, read the contract, read the terms and conditions. Um, what about internet? I know that's something that a lot of people. Um, they come at, like me or a bit di- addicted to it. Like you have to have your uh, Wi-Fi. What, what's right. the deal with that? Well, internet access on cruise ships is improving, but it's still pretty slow and it's quite expensive. Usually they charge you by either um, the amount of data you download and upload or by min- by the minute. And either way, mm-hmm. it's kind of expensive. So especially if your itinerary is taking you to cities where you can get off at your port and maybe find an internet cafe or a public hotspot. Um, I know some cities are now installing public Wi-Fi. And New York City mm-hmm. is doing that, for example. As we speak, they're taking phone booths and turning them into free mm-hmm. public Wi-Fi. Yeah, um, so th- you do a little research before you leave home and try to figure out other ways to to get online besides just using the ship service because you'll probably find the ship service is very frustrating to use and it costs a lot too so now that's a really good p- suggestion and i think that uh, when you get into a town or a city you are almost certainly going to have internet so i think maybe it's a matter of just being patient uh knowing that this is a cruise to relax and enjoy yourself right. and not be constantly online but um i i guess that until they get a satellite coverage or you know they really start investing in the infrastructure that's the reality of internet so be, be aware of that and the cruise lines of course don't want to tell you all of this because they make money from you know, they from do that. make money from it. Yeah. Yes. And also you need to, if you have a smartphone, you need to know to um, turn off data downloading and, yeah. and, you know, put it in airplane mode when you're not ashore. And if you're in another country, you need to investigate your data plan and how much it will cost you if you're intending to access the internet via your smartphone, because yeah. that can also be very expensive. I agree. Okay. So another uh, thing that I think people uh, maybe need to know the inside story on is travel insurance. Mm-hmm. And I know you're an absolute expert on this. We had another, we had a totally separate conversation that went on for 10 minutes. And I yes. honestly, go look that for that article, people, because it was amazing. But tell us just generally what to look for. Yeah. 
so your cruise line will offer you trip cancellation insurance and other types of travel insurance. Don't buy it from them. No. Um, their policy is is built to um, favor them as opposed to being provided by a neutral third party. Yes. And there are plenty of other places to buy travel insurance from. You can, um, you can contact your own insurance company if you want to, or you can go online to squaremouth.com, insuremytrip.com, various other websites that are aggregators, and you can look at all kinds of travel insurance. I mm-hmm. highly recommend insuring a cruise vacation because you have to put so much money down up front. And the refund policies tend to be, um, again, favoring right. the cruise lines. If something goes wrong, you want to be able to get at least some of your money back if you have to cancel the trip for illness or a death in the family or, mm-hmm. you know, personal reasons. You, when you book your cruise a year or two ahead, you don't know what's going to happen. And travel insurance can help you have peace of mind. And if you need medical care while you're out at sea, you probably want to have some travel medical insurance too, mm-hmm. especially if you're from the United States. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm going to say the same thing. I always say Medicare doesn't cover any medical costs outside the United yes. States, and that includes at sea. So for United States citizens on Medicare, travel medical insurance is a must. Right. And I think a lot of people, as you get a bit older, have to really do a bit of shopping for travel insurance because yes. um, there are age restrictions. I mean, over 65 yeah. and over 70, I've heard it's actually quite hard to get travel insurance. Yeah. So yeah. just um, do shopping around and I and do actually look at the other article that we did on this because um, there's a lot of fine, um, what do you call them, like the small print that mm-hmm. uh, that is, you know, not for, to our advantage. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've got travel insurance. What else? Um, oh, I know. Talk about shore excursions real quickly because that's a big secret. Sure. Sure. Shore excursions are a lot of fun. Um, they, your cruise line will, uh, unless they're included, if, if river cruises often include yes, them in the cost do. of the cruise. Okay. But usually ocean cruises, the shore excursions cost extra. And they're fun to do. There are a lot of kinds of opportunities you can have. You can, you know, go on a float plane in Alaska. You can sail an America's Cup uh, sailboat in the Caribbean. There are all mm-hmm. kinds of things to do. But, but they do cost money. And so you want to um, shop carefully for your shore excursions. And then maybe Maybe skip one, you know, a one port call. Maybe you. some people love spending the day on the ship when the ship is in port because they have everything to themselves. They have the pool mm. to themselves. They have the spa to themselves. They can sit in, in the dining room where, whenever they want to um, because the ship is deserted. Everyone else is on a shore excursion. <laughs> uh, so that if you like the opportunity to relax and really enjoy your ship's facilities without a zillion people running around, that's a thing to do. Or get off the ship and explore on your own, especially if, it, if it's a city that has you know transportation or um you know there are a lot of taxi cabs that come to the the, the cruise port you can get around pretty quickly and easily by yourself and with just a bit of research you know find some good places to go or go for a nice walk somewhere just be sure you're back well before the ship is supposed to leave because if you miss ships movement and you're not on a paid shore excursion they will not wait for you and you will be stuck there wow has it ever happened to you no, I'm a very prompt person. <laughs> I can imagine. I can't imagine you ever being late. But uh, actually, when we were on the Viking River cruise, it was very interesting. They um, had a plan where if you did decide to go off by yourself, they gave a phone number um, mm-hmm. and as, as a taxi company where they would guarantee to bring you back to the boat. And they had a checkout, awesome. check-in uh, process where you they, they wouldn't leave without you unless, mm-hmm. well, I suppose if you were like three hours late, they might yeah. they might push off. But anyway, as, as there, what else have we missed? What other secrets do the cruise companies keep from us? Um, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can exercise for free on your cruise. Um, usually your cruise has some kind of fitness center. It might not be giant, for example, on a river cruise. Right. There might not be one at all, and they, but they might use the bar area. Certainly that's what we did on the Viking River cruise I was on. But they offer all kinds of classes and you know workshops and what have you. But usually you can exercise in the fitness center without paying. It's the classes that they charge for. So you can pack a jump rope if you like jump roping um, and go into the fitness center. You can use the equipment, and it's a very, very cost-effective way to stay in shape after all those fabulous meals that you've had on your cruise. Oh, um, you can uh, They all allow you to walk on the deck. And, you know, they'll, they'll tell you how many laps of the ship is a mile, for example. Um, 
So there are a lot of opportunities for exercise that won't cost you anything. And, um, and the cruise lines are pretty good about letting you do those things. So, okay. Do you know, I think it's really interesting. I mean, the cruise lines have obviously got to make money and I, Mm -hmm. you know, I want them to keep making wonderful ships and, you know, the safety is important. We can't ask them to cut too many corners, but I think the secret of it is just to be like independent. Like don't feel Mm -hmm. like you have to go with the crowd every time, make it, Mm -hmm. you know, a unique experience for you and put, put, budgeting at the top of your list of things you know that's a lens that you're going to look at the cruise Mm -hmm. you don't have to spend all that money on a a short excursion if you just want to grab a a bus and go into town it's Mm -hmm. you know it's okay there's no uh, you don't have to do what everyone else is doing (laughs) no yeah okay did I miss anything um, one thing that I always tell people is to um, be sure you've kind of thought through some of the medical things uh, that you might yeah. need to have along. So a little first aid kit could save you money because if you have a Band-Aid and you have, you know, a couple of other tweezers and what have you that you carry in a little personal first aid kit, bring them along. Because then if something minor thing happens, you don't have to go to the ship's infirmary and have the doctor look at you because that will cost you money. Going to the ship's doctor is not free. Um, So, and yeah, if you've done your homework and bought good travel medical insurance, you know, you can get reimbursed for that. But some things are just minor and you can treat them yourself. Additionally, if you need um, over-the-counter medicines uh, and of course, your own prescriptions you need to pack carefully. But, you know, something like, you know, ibuprofen, if you, you might, maybe you'll get a headache or um, something along the lines of Pepto-Bismol, if you have a little bit of gastric distress, if you bring those things along and you don't have to bring tons of them, you know, then you're prepared if a minor thing comes up and you don't have to, you know, worry about spending extra money or going into town at the next port and finding a pharmacy. And maybe it's, an, you have to speak in a different language that you don't know. And pantomime, I have an upset stomach. That's not very fun. Um, and so, you know, you can pack a few little things and have peace of mind and save money and time as well. Okay. These are all great ideas. I love cruising. I've become a convert after my one river experience and also a one ocean cruise. I, I think it's great. And um, I think you've given us some good ideas for you know, saving money and just making, you know, experiencing more, saving, mm-hmm. saving a lot of money too. All right, Nancy, thank you so much for your help and for your great advice. Thanks for having me. Thank you. 